In the circle for the Lady Bears today is Sydney Holman Manzel, senior right-hander. Giradoni got the start in Austin last night, went the distance, tagged with the loss. So it's Sydney Mansell to start in the circle for Baylor today. Sydney on the year is 8-4 uh, and four record, 3.88 ERA, her 22nd appearance, her 14th start of the season. 74 innings, second most on the team, behind only Gia Redone. So that is the Baylor defense and the pitcher. Texas lines up this way. Here is Janae Jefferson. Jordan mentioned uh, two for four last night, couple of runs in an RBI. Great in that leadoff role for Texas. And this game is underway. First pitch to Jefferson is fouled back. We're underway, Baylor and Texas game two in this Big 12 series today from Waco. Jefferson at 441 on the season, her average. Texas third leading hitting team in the nation, second best in the Big 12 with a 359 team average. Yeah, Janae's a great player for this roster. She was a top 25 finalist for player of the year. Unfortunately did not make that top 10, but still a really great just accomplishment for her to be proud of. Chops this one back, glove by Manziel, throw to McGlon, that's out number one, as Jefferson is retired, one to three. Lineup for the Longhorns, Janae Jefferson playing second, leading off, Shannon Rhodes in center field, batting second. Lauren Burke in left field, she'll bat third. Mary Iacopo catching and batting cleanup. Colleen Sullivan at first base, she'll bat fifth. Taylor Ellsworth in right field today, batting sixth. Mackenzie Parker at short, batting seventh. J.J. Smith, the designated player, batting eighth, and Camille Corona will play third and bat ninth. Here's a grounder to short. Leah Benford up throwing, and that'll retire Shannon Rhodes. So two infield ground outs, two up, two down for Texas here in the top of the first. Now batting the left fielder, number zero. And here is Lauren Burke to the plate. Healthy lineups up and down this lineup for, uh, for the University of Texas. Head coach is Mike White in his third season as the head coach in Austin, his 11th overall. Of course, came to Texas from Oregon three years ago. Lauren Burke takes first pitch, called strike one. Burke a 314 average on the season beginning play today. Yo one, this is grounded to first. Big Saturday afternoon hop for Goose McGlawn there, and that is the inning. Sidney Mansell retires the Longhorns in order in the first. Baylor's coming to bat here at Getterman Stadium in Waco. Sidney Mansell retires Texas in order, top of the first. Worked uh, rather quickly in that top of the first inning. Now Texas takes to the field. Here is the batting lineup for Baylor. Luke Gilbert leading off playing left field. Emily Hott at second base, she'll bat second. Goose McGlon at first base, she'll bat third. Leah Benford at short, she'll bat cleanup. Taylor Ellis playing third base, she'll bat fifth. Josie Bauer in right field batting sixth. Zadie Lavalle catching and batting seventh. Hannah Thompson, or Hannah Smith in, uh, no, Hannah Thompson, designated <laughs> player, batting eighth, and Hannah Smith in center field. She will bat ninth. So this is Luke Gilbert leading off for the Lady Bears. UT's defense coming up in just a moment. Here's Molly Jacobson in the circle. That hit back to her. The throw makes it a little close over there, but uh, Sullivan reaches out and touches the bag with her right foot, and that is out number one. Defensively for Texas, Camille Corona plays third base. Mackenzie Parker at short, Janae Jefferson at second. Colleen Sullivan at first, Mary Iacopo behind the plate. Lauren Burke, Shannon Rhodes, Taylor Ellsworth left to right in the outfield. And Molly Jacobson in the circle for Texas to start. Senior left-hander. Jacobson on the year is 12 and four, 3.71 ERA. Her 22nd appearance, her 14th start on the year. It's a grounder through the hole into left field, a base hit by Emily Hott. First hit of the game here in the bottom of the first inning. 
Yeah, great piece of hitting there by Emily. She's been super hot lately. She's hitting 436 in conference and has been really good in that two hole for the Bears the last few months of the season. And after an 0 for 3 game last night, she starts a new streak. Uh, she had a 29 game on base streak. Snapped last night with that 0 for 3 night. So here she is starting another one. Hot aboard at first base, Goose McGlon to the plate. McGlon was 0 for 2 last night with a walk. Taylor only had two hits off Texas pitching last night. 8 0 win by the Longhorns in Austin. It was their senior night recognition last night. Taylor will have their senior day tomorrow following the Sunday game and the final game of the regular season. The numbers again for Molly Jacobson, the left hander for Texas. 68 innings worked on the year. That is the second most behind Shailen O'Leary. So the lefty Jacobson delivers. That one is lined hard, but foul into the net down the left field line. Molly is a grad transfer from OU, and so she is first year here at Texas and is coming up. I believe she surpassed it last night, but 300 Ks in a Texas uniform, which is, of course, very impressive. <laughs> very much so. It's an 0-2 count to McGlon at the plate. Grounds this one. That is foul, just wide of third base. Tyler Barfus, our home plate umpire. Chad Steers at first. Steve McCown at third. So 0-2, the count on Goose McGlon. Pitch, tried to hold back, couldn't do it. That is strike three. Boy, that off-speed pitch really had her yeah, way was, out ahead of it. That was a really nice pitch there. So two down with Emily Hot at first base. Here is Aaliyah Benford to the plate. There's that off-speed. And you just can't hold back. <laughs> Benford batting with two outs, a runner at first base. We got 317 on the year. She was 0 for 2 for the Lady Bears last night in Austin. Leah's coming off a big weekend last weekend, if you remember. She was 5 for 9 and had a really great series against Kansas. Go to first base, very close play. Emily Hot gets back safely. Yeah, what a weekend for Benford last week as Baylor got that sweep over the Jayhawks. Yeah. Two balls, no strikes, the count on Aaliyah Benford. Taylor Ellis waits on deck. Molly Jacobson in the circle for Texas. Texas at 36 and nine on the year. There's a grounder, a one hopper to third, Corona. Throw on to Sullivan at first, and that'll retire Benford to the Lady Bears in the first. One hit, but no more, end of one. Scoreless in Waco, a special guest when we come back to Getterman Stadium. It's Nikki Collin, Baylor's new women's basketball coach. There you go, that's a strike in our book. Throwing out the first pitch today prior to this Baylor-Texas game. We're pleased to be joined in the booth by Nikki Collin. Great to have you with you, uh, with us. You're, you're making the rounds. That was a good pitch. That wasn't bad. Oh, you know, I mean, it wasn't embarrassing. I wouldn't exactly call it a strike, though. Like, my dad would not be pleased with gotcha. that, I'm honestly. Was your dad your coach growing up? Um, my dad was that guy, like, hitting me fly balls in the backyard. Yeah, we had an yeah. acre on either side of our house. So it was, you know, turn this way, drop step over your right shoulder, drop step over your left shoulder. So, yeah, he spent a lot of time at the field with me. Oh, that's great. Uh, we appreciate you being here today. Mary Iacopo, the catcher for Texas, leads off this second inning facing Sidney Holman Manziel. And, and growing up, I mean, we think you're a basketball coach. We, we know you played basketball, but you played Little League Baseball growing up also. Yeah, Little League Baseball started uh, probably at six, you know, playing coach pitch and then all the way through uh, was a pitcher striking out boys in the seventh and eighth grade <laughs> until uh, high school when I played softball. 
That's great. Popular among the guys when you're striking them out? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Not exactly. There was a few, there was a few sixth, seventh, eighth grade boys that I think went crying back to the dugout. Yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but a good history with the uh, with the bat and the ball. And at what point did you did you or did you go straight basketball? No, I never did. I was I played four sports all the way through high school. So three sport letter winner and uh, also played uh, soccer in a co-ed kind of. Uh, rec situation. I love that. Don't you think that's great for youngsters growing up to play multiple sports? Yeah, and I wish we could still do it. You know, having three kids that are in youth sports, it's just really hard to do these days uh, with the emphasis on the club sports and, and, and not being able to have that crossover. I've seen some video from earlier this week. Your arrival in Waco on Tuesday, a press conference on Wednesday as Icopo pops out for the first out. It's been, uh, it's been a whirlwind week for you, hasn't it? Yeah, I, w I was telling someone, like, literally right now, a week ago, I was coaching a preseason WNBA game <laughs> against the Minnesota Lynx. <laughs> so you'd say a change in a week, looking at the dome over there, yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, how's it been? How's Waco? You know, I, I don't know much besides the walls uh, of my office <laughs> in, in Farrell for the last three days, but um, it's been great. I mean, even this morning, the reception around town, I, I went – um, out to breakfast with, with my strength coach, Jeremy, and he's like, you might not want to wear a Baylor T-shirt if you want any peace, <laughs> you know, around here. <laughs> um, but it was great. I mean, people have been really welcoming me at the, at the hotel anytime I'm on campus, so this has been great. That's awesome. And, yeah, tell us, what are you most looking forward to being here at Baylor? I mean, I think some of it's the tradition, but being able to put my own stamp on that, recruit high-level athletes, um, you know, and, and really help them grow and empower them um, on and off the court, really, in, into, you know, young adulthood. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we are so glad you're here. I am so excited to even be sitting by you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's, it's Colleen Sullivan at the plate. It's Nikki Collin in the booth with us, Baylor's new women's basketball coach. Uh, your, your, your three kids, what, what are they into sports-wise? Yeah, my, my 16 year old twins are boy girl and my daughter is very into competitive cheer. A lot of all-star cheer would be the right terminology to that. Five time national champion this year, most recently at Summit. So I'm really big into cheer. My other two kids are, are lacrosse players. My son Connor and my daughter Logan are both really into lacrosse. That is Colleen Sullivan with a single high off the wall in center field and then trying to stretch it into the double. She is gunned down. Hannah Smith with the throw. Aaliyah Benford with the tag and another defensive assist from the outfield for Baylor. That's a big play. That's awesome. You love seeing them fired up and you love just seeing that perfect throw from the outfield. That's a great relay and just really beautiful play. You love to see it. Slightly better than my pitch. <laughs> Hey, at least you didn't bounce it. That's all we ask around here. Hey, you hey, don't that, bounce it. That's what Mac Rhodes said to me before. <laughs> he said, I know you're getting on a plane to go home today, and, you know, just make sure you get the ball. I don't care if it goes past the catcher, but you cannot bounce it or you're not coming back. <laughs> Mac's good with the instructions. Yeah, that's yeah. Great. No, pressure, no, no pressure. pressure. Yeah, yeah, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Taylor Ellsworth, the right fielder batting for Texas. Base is clear. There are two down in the second inning. Scoreless Baylor in Texas. Listing with Nikki Collin, Baylor's new women's basketball coach. So uh, you find your way around town, sound like you're getting out a little bit. Yeah, I, I got to admit that the construction um, <laughs> near where I stayed at the Hilton has, you know, I look for the silos, which I know everybody that Good. knows anything <laughs> about Waco, you know, knows the silos. And it's I've been going by the silos every day to get to Farrell just because I know if I follow the silos, <laughs> I'll miss the construction. So... Been out a little bit, have spent most of my time. I think I think I left at about 9.30 last night from my office, so not much time. I have to tell you, Kevin uh, Gall has been a lifesaver because he, he went by the supermarket and, you know, bought some things for me to have back in my hotel room, and that's been dinner three nights in a row. So <laughs> shout out to Kevin. For yeah. Everybody's interested in your staff. You making progress on getting the staff together? I am. I'm going to keep it quiet, but, oh, okay. but you know, I think I have, like, one verbal commitment, as okay. they say. Very good, very and, good. And one that I'm pushing that I think Baylor people might be really excited about. Oh, so, you know, fantastic. Is, is that too much information? That's a great tease. Yeah, that's a great that tease. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's what we're trying to do around here. 
And, and we're friendly fire. We're not going to push you on that either, yeah. <laughs> well, like some people might. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the next interview is going to be like, what were you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I don't know. I don't know what I was saying. Yeah, Kyle Robart's phone is buzzing right now. So it's a 3-2 two, a two count on Taylor Ellsworth. Sydney Holman Manziel. Here comes the full count pitch. And that is lined into center field, a base hit by Ellsworth. So the inning continues. Second hit of the inning. Just one runner on base. Scoreless game, top of the second inning, Baylor and Texas. So that's one thing. It's it's uh, good timing that you're here, Baylor and Texas. You'll learn pretty quickly if you haven't already. <laughs> it's a good rivalry, a long-standing rivalry in every sport. Yeah, horns down, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you you fit right in. <laughs> you you could say that, yes, yes. I can say that up here. I didn't do that purposefully as I walked out. You did to, not do it on the field. That's down. right. That's right. But it's a great rivalry. It goes back to Southwest Conference days, Big 12. You know, we're 100 miles, uh, we're 100 miles north of Austin. So, a lot of lot of uh, memorable Baylor games, really in every sport between Baylor and Texas. Yeah, all the fans travel well. This is for COVID capacity. We're at a sold-out game today. Those basketball games get really crazy. So you're in for a fun time with that one. An error on the second baseman, Emily Hott, that allows Mackenzie Parker to reach first base. So there are two down now in the inning. There are two outs as well. Here's J.J. Smith, J.J. the designated player today for Texas. Still scoreless, second inning. Listing with Nikki Collin in the booth, Baylor's new women's basketball coach. He's giving us a tease about uh, progress in uh, filling her staff. So we... Are excited to get more information on that when that is available. You'll get it first. <laughs> when smile. I know, you'll know. All right, all right, fair that? enough. Yeah, that yeah. that okay. is fair enough. Your, uh, your, your meeting, I don't know if it was your first meeting, but one of your meetings with Scott Drew was really memorable, wasn't it? Love Scott. I mean, <laughs> he's just such a, such a good guy. 1-1 pitch to Smith, skips in. LaValle keeps it in front of her. It's two balls and a strike. Do some play-by-play. -play. I mean, you've done everything else well. You want to do play-by-play? -play? You know, I actually did an Arkansas-Alabama, not play-by-play, -play, right. col color in the booth at Arkansas. They're like, surely you know a little bit about softball. And I said, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like, I do know softball, but I don't, you know, I mean, I've done a lot of color for basketball. It's a little bit different. There's not near as much dead time. Right, right. Right? Oh, you know, definitely. like, yeah. it's so much com more conversational for you guys, like, during pitches yeah, sure. and between innings and things like that. So I'm not sure they asked me back. <laughs> uh, but it was fun to call that, you know, to be a part of that game. Obviously, Alabama at the time um, might have been number one. And you did TV for a stretch in there, didn't you? Quite a bit. Yeah. Love, love doing color. Um, for, for basketball games. They did it at FGCU. We've even done it down to the high school level when I was in, in Louisville. That's great. You're a natural. Hey, w thanks for your time. We appreciate you being here. We'll let you go back to work. Uh, sick them bears. All right, Nikki Collin with us. We're scoreless as we go to the bottom of the second. This one's for every parent who gets to do exactly what they want every other Thursday between 5.30 and 5.45 a.m. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. Summer's here, and with a great deal on a new Toyota, you can go out and enjoy all your favorite summer sports like softball, beach volleyball, triathlon, woo, racing, golf, whoa, someone needs lessons. During the Summer Starts Here sales event, get $750 customer cash, or qualified lessees can lease a new 2021 Highlander L for only $309 a month. Get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. This is the party that every player wants to be at. It's going to be passionate softball for sure. Back to crown a national champion for the first time since 2019. They get to chase history here.
Well, that was fun visiting with Nikki Collin, Baylor's new women's basketball coach, in the top of the second inning. And we move to the bottom of the second. So your first meeting with her, first impression. Oh, yeah, she was great. She was so fun to talk to, so conversational. I had to get a selfie because I was just fangirling <laughs> so hard. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Not many opportunities to just sit down with her like that. So fun to visit with her, and we appreciate uh, her time here. First pitch uh, delivered prior to the game today and then sticking around to visit with us. And she's actually uh, headed to the airport uh, pretty quick to, uh, I think, go back to Atlanta for a few days now. So I uh, really do appreciate her time. Yeah, absolutely. Five, six, and seven hitters due up for the Lady Bears as we go to the bottom of the second. Taylor Ellis leads things off. Ellis, one of the super seniors on this Baylor team, will be recognized tomorrow. The way Baylor does it is post-game, after the game. And uh, I've always said Baylor softball does a great job recognizing seniors. They, they really do. They typically, it's a little different now with the turf. Oh, there is the first out, just a little pop-up short. Sorry, John. No, that's it. That's the first out. <laughs> Normally, without the turf outfield, Baylor will put their numbers out there. Um, I'm not sure if they'll do that with this or not, but they normally put together a special video and really do a great job of honoring the players with jerseys and just sweet gifts that really commemorate their time here at Baylor. A few tears are shed, typically. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I know for me they were. <laughs> yeah, it's very well done. Um, always a good plan by our fan engagement staff and by Coach Moore and the coaching staff. Bauer hits a hot shot to short, glove by Mackenzie Parker, and she'll throw out Josie Bauer. Yeah, really nice play there, really clean. So quickly, there are two down in the bottom of the second inning. Here's Zadie LaValle, the Baylor catcher, to the plate. Valley 0 for 2 last night against the Longhorns. Again, Baylor only had two hits. Uh, they only had two walks, so really just four base runners all night. 8-0 loss to Texas. Game short the six innings by the run rule last night in this series opener. Winner of this series, whoever takes two of three or all three will finish in third place in the league standings. Other team will finish in fourth place. Can't finish any lower than fourth. Here's a pop, Wynn knocks that one down. Janae Jefferson claims it on the rim of the infield, and that is a quick second inning worked by Mild Series at ASA Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City, June 3rd through the 9th. Key dates ahead for college softball. Yeah, we've for sure missed it. Last week year, everything was canceled due to COVID, and uh, so really good to see those dates back on my calendar, and I'm excited to just sit on my couch and watch softball for the next <laughs> month. I can't wait. Boy, some great games over this next month, Absolutely. really. And you were a part of the uh, World Series, Baylor World Series team 2014. What a great experience that yes. must have been. A really special time and just memories that I'll remember and the other student athletes with me will remember forever. Camille Corona, the third baseman for Texas, leads off this third inning. 429 average on the year for Corona. She was two for two with a run scored last night. Pitches away, it's a ball and a strike to Camille Corona. And it looks like she's a recent addition to their lineup, but that she has just lit it up with every opportunity. So good for her to fight her way into this tough Texas lineup. Blonde will take that one unassisted. She'll tag Corona about a third of the way up the uh, first base line. Now, this is just her fifth start on the season, 31st game in which she's played. But like you said, a real key uh, hitting 429 coming in today. It's out number one in the third, back to the top of the order, and Janae Jefferson. Jefferson grounded back to Sydney Holman Manziel, her first time up today. Getting the second time through the lineup for Manziel against Texas. Pitch skips in, ball one. Seeing a little bit of control issues for Sid here. Um, I can't tell if that's an off speed she keeps getting in the dirt, but it looks like the same pitch that she's losing control over. There you go. Bunts that one, beautiful bunt by Jefferson, not even a throw made. 
Great placement by Jefferson, killed the ball, and Manziel fielded it cleanly, but no chance to get Jefferson. Yeah, that's what makes her such a triple threat for this Texas offense. She can lay it down, she can hit it, slap it, and she's got the wheels to get anywhere she needs to. Really a nice job just setting the table for this Texas offense at the top of the order. Team high, 57th hit of the year for Janae Jefferson. So with one out, runner at first, and Shannon Rhodes to the plate. Rhodes at 375. Here is a shot, almost took Manziel's head off into center field. Clean single on the first pitch, Rhodes sees. So Texas has something cooking here in the third with runners at first and second with one out. Yeah, really nicely just drove right back up the middle. It looks like it's probably hitting a little too much of the white there on that pitch and just, yeah, right there for the batters. So two on, one out, Lauren Burke to the plate. Taylor Ellis really in close at third down the third baseline. Benford moving over to cover the third base bag if needed. First pitch, ball one to Burke who grounded out to McGlon unassisted first time up today. It was tied on the corners. That is a grounder past Benford into left field. Jefferson will score without drawing a throw. Texas draws first blood. RBI single by Lauren Burke. Gives the Longhorns a 1-0 lead in the third inning. So back to back to back singles here. Jefferson started it with the bunt single. And a sharp single to center by Rhodes. Sharp single to left by Burke. Produce a run for the Longhorns. Still runners at first and second with one out and Mary Iacopo to the plate. This pitch called, strike one. And this is a lot of what Texas was doing last night where they were just getting base hit after base hit. It wasn't necessarily all these big hits and home runs. They were really passing the bat and being able to put runs on the board, which it looks like that is carrying over into today. Team that is very high in the national standings, averaging over seven runs per game, Texas. Just put their first one on the board here in the third. One nothing lead. Yeah, one through nine in the starting lineup. They have really healthy batting averages. They've got a lot of RBIs on the board. So it looks like they're a great just total offense. Holds back on that one. It's inside. It's a ball and a strike now to Iacopo. Real home run hitting team also. They've hit 70 home runs on the year. The school record is 88 set in 2010. So they are on a school record pace for home runs. Now that win today may, that would make it a, a tough chore. Not saying yeah. it can't be done, but wind is blowing in here at Gatterman Stadium. Yeah, they're wise to keep bunting and hitting <laughs> low line drives. Pitch outside, it's three balls, one strike to Mary Iacopo. Sydney Holman Mansell in the circle. Here comes the 3 1. That is off the plate, ball four. So the bases are loaded for the Longhorns here in the third. So four straight hitters have reached base. There's one out in the inning. The bases are loaded, and Colleen Sullivan to the plate. Sullivan had the single to center. It was uh, about three fourths of the way up the wall in center field. But then trying to stretch it into the double, she was thrown out by center fielder Hannah Smith. That was the second out in the second inning. So Sullivan bats here with the bases loaded and one down. Rhodes the runner at third, Burke the runner at second, Iacopo at first base. In the air to right field. Playable for Josie Bauer. Makes the catch. Tagging at third. Heading home. Throw is not in time. Turn throw back to second base is not in time. So a sack fly off the bat of Colleen Sullivan. Scores Shannon Rhodes for a 2-0 Texas lead. Great job by Josie out there moving in and just getting rid of the ball as soon as possible. The run was just too quick to 
end up catching. Not much she can do or anybody really in that situation. So now two down in the inning, runners at second and third. Brittany Sneed Newman out to talk to uh, the pitcher, Sidney Holman Manziel, and catcher, Zadie LaValle. Glenn Moore is uh, here in the dugout today. Uh, Hoot Jonigan is in the third base coaching box. Glenn was not with the team last night in Austin. Glenn underwent a uh, uh, procedure, a medical procedure on Thursday, and everyone, everyone thought mm -hmm. it was best him not to travel to Austin. And so uh, as much as he wanted to, he did not make the trip. But he's here in the dugout today and uh, just uh, trying to keep himself confined to the dugout as much as possible. Which is a hard task, it, for it sure. It definitely is. <laughs> I'm sure the trainers are watching him more than the players today. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a seat belt on Glenn yeah. in the dugout there to keep him in. This is Taylor Ellsworth to the plate, a single to center her first time up. Three hits and a walk and a sack fly produced a couple of runs for Texas here in the third. 2-0 lead for Texas. There are two outs, runners at second and third base. Taylor Ellsworth at 390 on the season as of this at bat. Nice pitch by Manziel. Kind of reached another gear there, didn't she? 69 yeah. miles per hour on that pitch. Yeah, you can tell she's a little frustrated out there. Not quite the control she's wanting, but that was a great comeback pitch. She's been looking for that high and in for a few and finally got it. So hopefully. Get that back into gear. There it is. It is again just a little bit too high. Clocked at 71 miles per hour. Kind of gave a stare in to the home plate umpire after that one. <laughs> yeah, they looked very similar to me. So it's three balls, one strike to Taylor Ellsworth. Here's the pitch. That is a called strike two. Ellsworth was headed to first base. Instead, she's reeled back, and it's a full count. It's a great spot. Really painted that outside upper corner of the strike zone. 3-2 with two outs and two on. Here's the pitch. That is up high, ball four. So Ellsworth draws the walk. Second walk of the inning, and the bases are loaded again with two down for Mackenzie Parker. Parker reached on a fielding error by Baylor's Emily Hott in the second inning. Part of the inning in which uh, Texas had a couple of singles and an error and did not come up with a run. Put two on the board here in the third for a 2 nothing lead. Chops this one foul, first base side. A lot of experience in that circle for Baylor. Giradoni last night and Sidney Holman Manziel today. Yeah, both have taken a fair share, more than a fair share of innings over their careers here at Baylor. Really a lot to be proud of in all of their time here. Skips in, LaValle keeps it in front of her. It's a ball and a strike. Eighth batter to bat this inning for the Longhorns. One one pitch, fouls it back, strike two. Day three of this series will be right back here tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central Time. We'll have the broadcast for you, Baylor in Texas. On a Mother's Day afternoon, and that will be the final game of the regular season for both these teams. It's on to the Big 12 tournament in Oklahoma City next week. The 1 2. This is kind of evens at two balls, two strikes. I need to ask my mom if she misses spending her Mother's Day. <laughs> At the softball fields. That was <laughs> for as long as I could remember. That was her Mother's Day. And I'm sure she's kind of thankful that <laughs> we get to celebrate her now. <laughs> I bet that's right. I bet more often than not, she'd spend it there, right? Yeah, absolutely. 
Normally we were in Austin playing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Most often uh, this series has closed the regular season for both teams. Yeah. The pitch was Parker held back, so it's a full count now. All the runners should be moving on this pitch. With two down, full count pitch. Mansell delivers. That is ball four. She's walked in a run with back-to-back -back walks. Texas goes up 3-0 on Baylor. Looks like Coach Newman might be coming out to make the switch. Looks like Aaliyah Benford is going to take the mound. All right, Benford moves into the circle out of the shortstop spot. Give you her numbers when we come back. Baylor trailing 3 0 to Texas. We're in the third, and we'll, or uh, innings pitched, third most on the team. Opponents hitting 254 off of her. First batter she faces is J.J. Smith, the designated player for Texas. Smith laces this one foul down the right field line. So Aaliyah Benford, uh, very talented uh, to, to play at shortstop and then to be able to come in as uh, in the circle when called upon. Yeah, and she can also have an over 317 batting average. I would think that makes her a unicorn of the softball world. <laughs> That's right. It's a very good description. <laughs> Off-speed pitch, no balls, two strikes now to J.J. Smith. Trying to get out of a bases loaded jam. Ooh, that is Ooh. another off speed pitch. Really sure. wanted that one. Yeah. <laughs> you see her dancing in the circle out there. Not sure where that one missed. There's another look at it. Ooh, that looks like a missed call to me. <laughs> Goes down as ball one, there is ball two. So just like that, a 2 2 count on JJ Smith. Campbell Selman, by the way, comes in at shortstop for the Lady Bears. Selman, a second-year freshman out of Lufkin. 2-2. Off-speed misses inside. So on that very close call, which would have ended the inning, now it's a full count to J.J. Smith. Two outs and the base is loaded for Texas. Here's the pitch, sends it into the air, left field, foul territory. Gilbert gives chase, can't get to it. And maybe blew that one out of play a little bit. So we'll do it again at three balls and two strikes. Blue having just a little bit of fun out there, sliding around. <laughs> three balls, two strikes, the count on J.J. Smith. Grounded out to short her first time up today. Bats here with the bases loaded and two down. Texas looking to add to their three nothing lead. That is ball four. So back to back to back walks have produced a couple of runs for Texas. Now a four nothing lead for the Longhorns in the third. Actually four walks in the inning. Here is Camille Corona to the plate. As Texas has batted around. Corona started the inning, grounding out to Goose McGlawn unassisted. Yeah, and if you're Benford at this point, you really just need to get the ball into play. You, yep, there, just like just that. Just like that. Grounder to Hot, she'll underhand to McGlawn, and that is the inning. But a big third inning for Texas. Four runs on the board, middle of the third, 4-0 Texas, lead coach at Texas, his 11th overall, and we appreciate him visiting with us here in the third inning. As Baylor comes to bat, bottom of the third, now trailing 4-0 to Texas. 8-9-1 due up for the Lady Bears in the third. Hannah Thompson, Hannah Smith, then back to the top of the order, and Lou Gilbert. Hannah Thompson, the designated player, was 0-2 last night in Austin. 48 average on the year for the senior from Dickinson. Yeah, today is graduation day for Hannah. Taylor Ellis graduated yesterday with her master's and 
Hannah Thompson will be finishing with her bachelor's today. Fantastic. Yeah. Did she get to walk? Was it the ceremony hers this morning? Or was it this I afternoon? I am not sure. Yeah. Big day. Big day. Yeah, a lot of emotions this weekend yeah. for these Baylor players. <laughs> That's great. Congratulations to them and to all the graduates. Yeah, there's a handful on this Baylor squad. Um, but yeah, really bittersweet time for all of them, I'm sure. To the count on Thompson here. Jacobson delivers. Grounded foul. Remains no balls, two strikes. They are holding uh, outdoor graduation this year uh, for obvious reasons. You can uh, socially distance yourself much better at McLean Stadium than you could inside the Farrell Center. It's the first outdoor graduation for Baylor since 1955. Grounder to short. Parker will throw her out. 6-3 for the put out. And the first out of the third inning. I would be curious to see if we continue to hold them outdoors. I think right. people are really enjoying the McLean venue and the space it allows and just the flexibility they have. Whereas Farrell, it's beautiful and wonderful, but I think you get a little more freedom over there at McLean. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's a great setup at McLean. Only issue is the weather, and the weather yeah. is, uh, has been fine. I mean, better than fine, really. Yeah. But the ceremony's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, two each day. So if the weather, you know, if you could promise weather like this, right. <laughs> I think you would schedule it out year, outside every year. Here's Hannah Smith to the plate, the Bears center fielder. Hannah's another one of those graduates today, so big day for her. We were pulling into the parking lot earlier here, so we've got softball going on at Getterman Stadium. Baseball's playing K-State at Baylor Ballpark. And men's and women's tennis are hosting uh, NCAA second round matches today at the Heard Tennis Center. And I was thinking, what would it be like if we had graduation going on right now in the <laughs> Farrell Center? We would have been parking up the street somewhere. Yeah, we would have had to call an Uber to yeah. come call the game. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but McLean, it's uh, a lot more parking over there. And it's worked out really well. <laughs> Really beautiful weather for all the sports, all the graduations, so really thankful for that amidst the craziness, right? Yeah, exactly. This weekend all the way around. 2-2 count on Hannah Smith. One down, nobody on. Baylor batting bottom of the third, trailing Texas 4 to nothing. Which is up, gets a piece of that, pops it up. Foul ground caught by Colleen Sullivan in front of the Texas dugout for out number now two. So through the first uh, first time through the lineup for Molly Jacobson, she's allowed only one hit. That was an Emily Hot one out single in the first inning. Two down in the third. Here's Lou Gilbert back to the plate. Gilbert grounded back to the pitcher her first time up. Tries to bunt her way aboard and pushes it foul. Yeah, lose a key part of this Baylor offense. She gets them going. She keeps them going. She's hitting 435 in conference and is leading the Big 12 with 13 doubles. So a really big part of this Baylor offense that they need to get going if they want a chance to win this game. We had a double last night against Texas, one of only two hits by the Lady Bears. Been very good in that leadoff role since uh, taking that spot when Nikki yeah. Dawson went out. There's a grounder past the circle, drawn in infield. Parker will throw her out, and Baylor goes one, two, three in the third. On to the fourth inning. It comes up May 14th and 15th. All seven games on either ESPN Plus, ESPNU, or ESPN2, the championship game, Saturday, May 15th. And that will be at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. in the central time zone on ESPN2. So we look forward to that, those games in Oklahoma City. Jordan, uh, you were reminding me uh, the time you were playing at Baylor was that period when uh, there was no Big 12 tournament. Yeah, it's such a bummer. I think it's such a fun idea, and I know some conferences love it, some hate it, but I think it's a great way to just kind of enter the postseason and kind of like a nice warm-up with high stakes. <laughs> <laughs> very much so. And it's very, uh, you know, quality softball there in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Janae Jefferson leads off this fourth inning for Texas. Fouled away out of play down the left field line. 
Yeah, even as a fan, to be able to go and see all the Big 12 teams there competing and playing each other, that's such a fun environment for fans, families, just everyone involved. I think the thinking was for a while there that uh, it, it was too much. It was like wearing yeah. the teams out. Then they were worn out going into NCAA regionals. Yeah. So the coaches said, let's try this. Let's don't have a Big 12 tournament. And uh, did that for just a few years, and now it's back. Yeah, before I got to Baylor, they only played, they didn't play the full three series. They only played whoever wins the series. So if you took it in two, you just went home and it was fine. And so once I got to Baylor, they added the third game regardless, just for the sake of stats. And I think they thought, well, if we're playing all these games, we got to take away the tournament. And so they figured it out that yeah. the teams could handle it and they brought it back. I love it. Well, despite that, we did not have a tournament last year as Jefferson is hit by the pitch by Aaliyah Benford. Jefferson will trot down to first base. Last year, of course, uh, COVID got us. Uh, no tournament last year, shortened season. And uh, the year before that, it was completely rained out. No tournament at all, just due to the elements. So you have to go back to 2018, 1,098 days wow. between Big 12 tournaments in Oklahoma City. So Jefferson is aboard at first base. Here is Shannon Rhodes to the plate, one for two on the day. Texas up 4-0 on Baylor. Benford in the circle, took over last inning for the starter, Sidney Holman Manziel. Yeah, this one-two punch for Texas has been the biggest threat to Baylor both games, the Friday and Saturday. They've been outstanding. 1-0 pitch, chop foul at the plate by Rhodes. Four runs on five hits for the Longhorns. No runs on one hit and an error for the Lady Bears. If you noticed, uh, if you detected the accent in Coach Mike White's mm -hmm. voice when we visited with him, he's a native of New Zealand and uh, has been in the States for a while, but uh, seemed like he hadn't lost that accent much, if no. any at all. Yeah, it was fun to talk to him. Yeah. He's such a respected, accomplished coach, and just really neat that. One, he's in the Big 12, and two, that we got to talk to him. <laughs> he was he might still be a coach for the U.S. team, but he has coached international softball. He was the coach at Oregon for a while, and just really accomplished softball coach. From Oregon to the University of Texas. Shannon Rhodes at the plate here, one of the uh, players that followed him from Eugene to Austin. Yeah, there's a little group of them on this squad, and they are all essential pieces of this Texas lineup. Just got a piece of that, fouled it away. Two to the count on Shannon Rhodes at the plate. Grounded out to shorter first time up, single to center, and scored in that four run third inning. Swing and a miss. Strike three by Shannon Rhodes. Benford with a big strikeout for the first out here in the fourth. One down, Jefferson remains at first base. Here is Lauren Burke to the plate. Burke, the left fielder, is one for two on the night. Burke is another one of those that came from Oregon and has just fit right in in this Texas lineup. This pitch called strike one on Burke. Benford's starting to get a little control of that changeup, and it's working nicely. She got uh, Rhodes on that strike three and then just started this off really nicely with that change again. Grounded to first, gloved by McGlon to second, and a, oh, it looked like they had the double play. Looked like Jefferson slid right into that tag. But our base umpire out there, Steve McCown, says no. Oh, nice turn by play. Goose McGlon yes. at first base. Really heads up play there to tag the bag and go immediately to second. Great play. I don't know. I, I want to see it again. That was really that was close so at close. second base. So two down now. Jefferson the runner at second. 
batter is Mary Iacopo, the catcher for UT. Iacopo is 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. Four walks in that four-run third inning really were Baylor's undoing there. Three of those issued by Sidney Holman Manziel, one by pitcher in the circle now, Leah Benford. Yeah, Leah got thrown into a tough spot there. Bases loaded, yeah. Rounder wide of third. Remains no balls, two strikes on Mary Iacopo. It's Janae Jefferson, the runner at second base for UT. It's been a little quiet over there for Ta Taylor Ellis. She just chased that foul ball, and I was thinking, we haven't seen her today. That's a good point. Two hopper to short. The throw in time, scooped by Goose McGlawn. Well done on both ends, and that is the inning. Tander, who's pitching very well for UT. Right behind us at uh, Baylor Ballpark, Baylor Baseball continues their series with Kansas State. One big last night, 17-2 over the Wildcats. Wow. And Baylor is leading now 2-1, top of the fourth over K-State. They'll play uh, today and conclude that series tomorrow. As Emily Hot leads off the fourth inning. Of course, Big 12 softball, uh, a lot of eyes focused on number one in the league versus number two in the league. A liner foul down the right field line off the bat of Emily Hot. That is uh, te uh, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State playing in Stillwater. Cowgirls knocked off the Sooners last night, handing OU only their second loss of the year, their first conference loss of the season, 6-4. to four. And where are they now in game two of that series? Yes, OU is up currently in the middle of the third of game two. So... Definitely a lot of eyes on that. And, and after last night's loss, now the winner of that series will be the winner of the regular season for the Big 12. So really high stakes going on over there in Stillwater. It's down to Bedlam to decide the uh, regular season champs in Big 12 softball. Sounds like a friendly rivalry, right? <laughs> Swing and a miss there, thrown down to first to complete the strikeout of Emily Hot for the first out in the fourth inning. Hot retired, one out. Here is Goose McGlawn to the plate. Struck out her first time up against Molly Jacobson, who is very much in control in the circle for UT. She is. She's done a great job of just letting her defense play today. She's really not trying to strike out these batters. She's letting them put in a play, and her defense has done a great job. Her pitch count right now is at 37 through, you know, almost four innings. Wow. So really great job by her and just letting her team work behind her. This one hit down the left field line, but foul off the bat of Goose McGlawn. Wynn might have got a hold of that yeah, one. Yeah, very possible. Could have been an extra bases for McGlawn on that one. Taylor sits at 27 and 16 on the year, 8 and 7 in Big 12 play. Sitting in fourth in the Big 12 standings. Fouled back, remains no balls, two strikes. Schedule makers uh, could not have done much better. Top four teams in the league playing each other here on the final weekend of the regular season. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, and Baylor in Texas. Yeah, how'd they do that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We give credit to for that. Pitch up high, it's a ball and two strikes. Goose is another one of our graduates this weekend. She finished her master's degree, and so she will be ready to roll and coach come this fall. Swinging strike three, again ahead of that pitch. Couple of strikeouts back to back to start the fourth inning by Molly Jacobson of UT. I was just talking about how she let the defense play and now she's decided we're just gonna strike them out. Now through the first three innings, she had only one strikeout. Now she has uh, struck out Hot and McGlon back to back to start the fourth. Brings up Aaliyah Benford. Now pitching for Baylor, remains in there for her bat. A 
Yeah, Baylor just needs a spark right now. It doesn't matter where it comes from. We just need one of these hitters to get a hold of one and just get something going. Rounder right side, flip to Jefferson covering, and Baylor goes in order in the fourth. On to the fifth inning at Gatterman Stadium. It remains 4-0, Texas leading Baylor. A special moment and just a reminder of Coach Lum, and it, it's definitely different out here this season, but these girls have dedicated the season to him and are trying to honor him the best they can, and, and we all are, so we just we miss Lum, and we love the Lumley family. Very much so, lifting up Stacy and the, and the boys, and a uh, very nice presentation. So that will be, uh, that plaque will be uh, posted somewhere. I, I don't know if they've decided inside or outside the Getterman indoor facility. I think they want it outside somewhere so more people can see yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I would think so. There's a few pillars over there. That would be a great spot. But I'm glad that they've found a way to permanently honor him here at Getterman. Colleen Sullivan leads off the fifth inning. For Texas, one for one with a sacrifice fly today. It's two balls, one count, uh, two balls, one strike count on Colleen Sullivan. Leah Benford in the circle for Baylor. Second year freshman for the Lady Bears out of New Braunfels Canyon High School. Got her to chase that one outside the strike zone. Even to count at two balls, two strikes. Leah's had a really a handful of really nice change-ups. So good for her getting that working today and really kind of throwing these Texas batters off balance. Two-two, grounded to short. Selman will throw on to McGlon and that'll retire Sullivan out number one in the fifth. Here's Taylor Ellsworth to the plate. She is one for one with a walk. Texas did all their damage run-wise in the third inning. All four of their runs came home in the third when they sent ten batters to the plate. Ellsworth, part of that string of uh, three consecutive walks, walked in a couple of runs. The last batter that Mansell faced was Mackenzie Parker, who's on deck now, walked in a run. And then Benford, the first batter she faced was J.J. Smith, and that walked in a run. So those four walks in the inning really costly to Baylor. Yeah, you always hate to see runs come in that way. Uh, it's hard to stop once you kind of open that door. And yeah, you would, you would like to at least have two of those back right that walked in. 2-0 the count here on Ellsworth from Benford. Off speed, misses, ball three. That smile on her face would tell you that's that's killing him with kindness, right? That's uh, <laughs> her way of saying I disagree with that call. We'll say that, yeah. <laughs> so 3-0. There's a call to strike one. I mentioned Benford's big game, our big series last weekend against Kansas. Included uh, two three-run homers in the Saturday game, six RBIs in the game, tied a Getterman Stadium record. So a big weekend all the way around for Aaliyah Benford at the plate last week. Yeah, she's a really impressive player just overall. She's got so much poise and just maturity out there, whether she's at short, in the box, on the mound, wherever you want to put her. She does not look like a player that sat out mainly her freshman year with COVID stuff, but... Just a really impressive player. Got a pinch runner at first base. It's M.K. Tedder. Tedder out of Hoover, Alabama. Listed on their roster as a junior, but she was one of the seniors recognized last night for UT on their senior night. Shannon Rhodes, Caitlin Washington, Taylor Ellsworth, Molly Jacobson, and M.K. Tedder were recognized prior to the game last night. This is Mackenzie Parker at the plate, hit by the pitch from Aaliyah Benford. Seems to be okay down at first base. Got the shoulder, it looks like, caught Parker. Yeah, that doesn't feel good. 
So two aboard now with one out in the fifth. J.J. Smith to the plate. The designated player is 0 for 1 with a walk. Benford pitches called strike one. Gets the sign and delivers. Throw behind the runner down to second base, and Ellsworth is back safely. Ellsworth uh, defensively in right field today. I think of her as a catcher. She was primarily a catcher last year, wasn't she? That sounds right. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think she has caught some this year, but uh, in right field today. This is grounded. McGlon can't handle it, and all hands are safe. Glances off the glove of Goose McGlon at first base. Will be an error you would expect the second of the day on Baylor, and it loads the bases with one out here in the fifth. It is on the board as E3, second error of the day on Baylor. So the base is loaded for Camille Corona, 0 for 2 on the day. Fouls this one off the netting, third base side. Taylor with the infield pulled in, trailing 4 0. One out here in the fifth inning. That pitch is ball one. Corona has grounded out to first base unassisted and grounded out to second. So a couple of infield ground outs today by Corona. Still with a 375 average as of this at bat. This one's grounded to short. She'll come home for the force. And well played by Baylor with the infield in. Campbell Selman wasted no time fielding that, throwing it to LaValle to get the force of Ellsworth coming home for out number two. Yeah, really clean play there by Selman. Great job just going right for that home out. That's a huge out as now we're back at the top of the order and we just need to tag a bag to get an out. The unfortunate part is it is Janae Jefferson who is a great hitter. Already her fourth at bat today in the fifth inning. She's been on base two of the three previous times. Off-speed pitch called strike one to Jefferson. Leah's really using that off speed today. I, I want to say she's had it in at least every at bat she's fate or she's pitched so far. Jefferson hit by a pitch her last time up. Can't do this th that this time. That would bring another run home for Texas. Base is loaded for the Longhorns. Parker at third base. Smith at second. Camille Corona at first. I take a quick break there. The wind is just <laughs> going crazy. That was a burst. <laughs> Look at that. Stirs up the dust around home plate. Now back to play. Called strike two on Jefferson from Benford. Yeah, I think the wind just hit another level. It yeah. is going crazy right now. <laughs> I think you're right. Look at those flags, yeah. man. They are straining Great. out there. Great. One, two to Jefferson. Hit hard on a line taken by Emily Hott, and that is the inning. So the Longhorns leave the bases loaded in the fifth. To the bottom of the fifth inning, our score remains. J.C. Moore, that is Coach Moore's daughter, who just finished her junior year here at Baylor, and will be going into her senior year. That is oh my gosh. so is that crazy right? to me. Where is time going? I still remember her as just a little girl, <laughs> barefoot, running around the fields. JC and her brother Ty is on the football team here at Baylor. Fun to see him out there. Yes, I love keeping up with all their photos and just all the Baylor things going on. And the extended members of the uh, Moore family. It's Absolutely. really fun. In the fifth, Taylor Ellis leads off for the Lady Bears, trailing by a score of four to nothing. 
Taylor just one hit so far. Senior weekend, Taylor Ellis a part of that. And here's a liner in the left field, a base hit. First hit of the day for Ellis, second of the day for the Lady Bears. Maybe that'll get things going, a leadoff single in the fifth. So that picture looked like uh, Texas maybe recognized the Baylor seniors last night. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, they did. They presented them with a sweet gift before the game, and I know a few of them are, are friends. So it's it's always fun to play against your friends, but also it's a little difficult deal. So, but good to see such a good relationship between these two teams. Brings up Josie Bauer for the Lady Bears, grounded out to short her first time up, 0 for 1 on the day. 301, her average as of this plate appearance. Molly Jacobson in the circle has given up now two hits to Baylor as we play in the fifth inning. It's a fly to right field, could be trouble, but chased down by Taylor Ellsworth. The throw back to first, and scooting back safely is Taylor Ellis. What a play by Taylor Ellsworth in right field for the Longhorns. Yeah, she doesn't look like a catcher to me. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> that was an incredible play and really great recognition by Taylor Ellis to turn around and book it back to first base. Really great softball across the board there. Had extra bases written all over it, yeah. but Ellsworth tracks it down. Take a bow out there, there Taylor Ellsworth. There you go. Ellsworth. Give him a hook on. <laughs> Very nice play. And then the presence of mind to get it back in quickly and almost yeah. double off uh, Taylor almost. Ellis at first. Yeah. Hey, middle. Not middle. Here we go. Big smiles from Molly Jacobson. Her, her defense is working hard behind her today. Free conference in the circle by the entire infield as Zadie LaValle comes to the plate. So Ellis aboard at first base. One down now. Valley is 0 for 1 on the day. She popped out to the second baseman, Janae Jefferson, to end the second inning. Baylor Bats got a little movement going this inning so far. They've been looking for that. That's true. Really more this inning, even though it's just one hit and a long fly out than, yeah. uh, than any previous inning. Megan Diaz coaching at first base for Baylor. as the eyes and the ears for the base runner, Taylor Ellis. It's good to have Megan back on staff this year. Yeah, Megan um, was a senior on the team the year before I got here, so I never got to play with her, but we've been able to coach at a few camps together, and she's just phenomenal. All her players love her, and this Baylor team seems to respond really well to her as well, so it's been a great addition to have her. She always volunteers. She said, hey, if you need me, puts her hands up by her ears. I love it. Like a headset, so say, all right, give you a chance one of these days. <laughs> the valley goes down swinging. That's the second out of the fifth now inning. Nope, nope. So a pinch hitter is coming up for Baylor. Sydney Cayazos will bat for Hannah Thompson. Sydney just had a birthday this week. Might have been yesterday. Very nice. Another year wiser. <laughs> Sydney Cayazos, the uh, true freshman out of Georgetown, will bat against Molly Jacobson. Texas leading four to nothing. Baylor batting in the bottom of the fifth inning. Taylor Ellis led off with a single. She remains at first base with two down. Pitch off the glove of Jacobson. Deflects it to the shortstop spot, vacated by Mackenzie Parker, who was going over after that ball. So let's see how they rule that one, but Kayazos is aboard. I would think that'll be a hit. Looks like it is. I would say hit. She hit that ball hard, and that's really what you have to do. Get the ball hard in play, make the defense, make those mistakes. 
And another pinch hitter is coming up. Alyssa Avalos will bat for Hannah Smith. So two aboard for Baylor. First time today, Baylor's had two base runners on in the same inning. Another one of our Baylor grads this weekend, Alyssa Avalos. We've got a handful of them That's today. That's a bunch, isn't it? It's great. Of course, kind of a uh, kind of a double senior class this yeah. year, isn't it? Yeah. First pitch, ball one to Avalos. So he catches the outside part of the plate, evens the count. Lessa Avalos, fourth year junior from Rancho Cucamonga, California. So a senior who's received her undergraduate degree. It's the tricky part this year. Are you a fourth year junior? <laughs> Are you a senior? Yeah, what do you call They're yourself? They're actually both. Yeah. <laughs> but either would be accurate. Yeah, I think it'll be a few years before we understand our terminology I again guess. and our classifications. <laughs> <sighs> it'll be a four-year cycle, won't it? Or maybe a three-year cycle. It'll have to be. And you wonder how many of these schools, it will affect their scholarships and just how they're allocating money and just really tricky across the board. Thankful that these players get to fulfill their four years, but just the implications that follow are, I'm sure, a little messy for some of these coaches. Yeah, expanded rosters at times can be uh, helpful. You know, maybe in times of injury, if you lose somebody to COVID, this one's popped up and will fall foul and touched. Great job by Alyssa not touching that. <laughs> I don't know if she meant to or not, but she touches that and it seems fair. They would call her out. And it looks like Mike White is going to maybe argue that, that she was in the way or something of the sort. Yeah, I think it, that's his point. She was running out uh, down the first baseline. Jacobson was coming in from the uh, pitching circle. Here's another look at it. I mean, I don't think she has any idea that the ball is right there. She's just running it out, right? Yeah. So and because no defensive player touched her, there's really no ruling that the umpires could do. So typically in the field, like if a shortstop touches a ground ball or touches a runner trying to get to a ground ball, the runner's automatically out, but you have to initiate that contact. The ball has to be in fair play. It's a really just tricky across the board. Grounded to first by Avalos. Sullivan will touch the bag, and that is the inning. Baylor strands a couple of runners, two hits in the inning, but no more. On to the sixth inning it remains. 4-0, Texas up on Baylor. Corner, Baylor is really, both these teams have put themselves in great position to make an NCAA regional this year. Baylor's RPI up to number 32 this week. Texas, would you tell me, is 12? Yeah, Texas is number 12 and has a chance to host. So this series is really important for both of these teams to kind of put an exclamation point on their season and buy for, yeah, a higher seed in the tournament and just a better regional position. Two, three, and four hitters for Texas. Leading off this sixth inning, that's Shannon Rhodes leading off. Swings and misses on that offering from Aaliyah Benford. It's no balls, two strikes. Rhodes one for three on the day. A single to center field in that four-run third inning. Texas really has bunched their hits together today. They've got five hits total, and there's a strikeout of Rhodes by Aaliyah Benford. Texas has five hits total, three of which came in that third inning. Yeah, Aliyah Benford has done a great job of subduing this offense and really keeping their big hitters off balance. That changeup has been stellar for her today, and it's, again, you're seeing the effects of that. She's struck out Shannon Rhodes twice now. Three total strikeouts. Actually, just two strikeouts total by Benford, and both of Shannon Rhodes. Here is uh, Lauren Burke to the plate. Arn Burke today is one for three. Happy, happy, happy. 
Hits this one wide of first base. Texas, again, uh, second leading hitting team in the Big 12. Third in the nation, tied for third in the nation with a 359 batting average. But uh, have not been overpowering offensively today. Baylor's helped them with those walks and a couple of hit batters. But only five hits to produce the four runs. And you couple that with Molly Jacobson in the circle pitching very well. And things have been all Longhorns so far. Grounder up the first baseline. McGlon will take that unassisted for the second out here in the sixth. That's a really impressive stat that two of the top th three teams in the nation, the batting averages are in the Big 12. Big 12. OU <laughs> is by far leading that. And then I'm assuming UCLA's number two and then Texas. That's a really great stat for the Big 12. How about that? Sets up for some quality uh, softball in Oklahoma City. Big 12 tournament, and maybe uh, a few months or a few weeks after that, maybe the College World Series. Yeah, and you know this Texas team would like to have a better showing against OSU, against OU. They did not have good series against either team, so I'm sure they've got that Big 12 tournament scheduled and looking for those opponents. This is Mary Iacopo at the plate, the catcher for UT. 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. That's with two outs, nobody on. We're in the sixth inning. Texas up 4 0 on Baylor. Longhorns with a win today. If they hold on and win, they would clinch the series. They take the first two games in the series, so thus would clinch third place in the Big 12 standings. Still have a game to play tomorrow. It's at 1 o'clock Central Time here in Waco. But you clinch the series and you clinch third place and uh, would lock Baylor into fourth place if this score holds. Yeah, and I would assume that that would also clinch their spot as a host site. Um, they are one of the 20 predetermined sites that can host four regionals, and, and I would think a third place finish in such a great conference would do that for them. Absolutely, absolutely. Plus, uh, it seems like not many hosting possibilities in the state of Texas this year. Yeah, they are the only ones on the list as of now, and looks like LSU should and then Arkansas and Missouri and and really outside of the Big 12 those would be the closest ones that I would assume Baylor might go to for Saturday in college softball look at this lineup one week from today May 15th on ESPN 2 the ACC championship followed by the American the Big 12 and the SEC championship in softball all lined up back to back to back to back one week from today May 15th yeah, you love to see just primetime softball on every channel all day. I love it. That is great coverage by our partners at ESPN. The thing they're doing is banking on all those being two-hour games, too. <laughs> Sometimes that works out. Yeah. Sometimes. Top of the order, Lou Gilbert leads off for the Lady Bears in the sixth inning. That's okay. kind of like the Big 12 placing the top four teams playing each other on the last <laughs> weekend right. of regular season. Now that worked. Yeah. That worked well. Lou Gilbert 0 for 2 on the day. Shows bunt, lets it go by. It's two balls and a strike. Gilbert at 350 now on the season. Team leader in hits and doubles. Co-leader in home runs, Gilbert, McGlon, and Benford all with five home runs. Tied for the team lead. Scoots her back. Update from Baylor Baseball. Bears playing uh, Kansas State. Still 2-1 Bears on top. That is in the top of the sixth inning. The Baylor rolled last night to a 17-2 win. We're facing Jordan Wicks for K-State today. And uh, even with the wind blowing out there at the Baylor ballpark, tough contest. Is she safe there at first base? Yeah. Yeah, she she's is. The so tag. the ball was bobbled by Colleen Sullivan, first baseman. Gilbert uh, kind of matrixed her way around her, and she is aboard at first base. Yeah, really athletic move there. Sullivan <laughs> reached for and did not make contact. So Lou Gilbert, a hustling infield play. It'd be an error charged on Sullivan at first base. Great to have a Baylor lead off on base, though. That's exactly what they've needed. Second inning in a row. Remember, Taylor Ellis led yeah. off last inning with a single. 
Now Gilbert is bored here at first as Emily Hott comes to the plate. Hot one for two on the day. First inning single by Hot was the only hit of the day for Baylor up until the fifth inning. A couple of hits in that fifth. Molly Jacobson very much in control in the circle for Texas. Gilbert out of Kansas City, forward at first base. Taylor in the all green today, Texas in the whites. So senior day tomorrow, uh, do the seniors get to pick the uniform combo? In the past, yes. The okay. seniors get to pick breakfast in the morning, and then they also get to pick the uniforms. Nice. So. And two, swinging strike three by Hot. I don't know if Coach Moore will be angry at me saying this, but my senior day, we got in trouble. So we had to be here at 6 a.m. for hitting, and then we ate McDonald's. So we didn't get to pick breakfast, and turned out to be a great day, but. <laughs> you know, you mentioned that, and I kind of remember that. He was not happy about yeah, the, something the day before. We had dropped a game to Iowa State, yeah. and it was not great. So he had you here at 6 a.m. Yeah, six years later, I can laugh about it, but <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> Shades of the county fair. Grounded foul down the third baseline. John again in the third base coaching box today. We told you uh, Coach Moore is anchored in the dugout. And there's Hoot. New to the Baylor staff this year. What a great addition. Who, 20 years, a baseball assistant here at Baylor. And I think if you can coach, you can coach. And who can coach? Absolutely. 1-1 one, one popped up left side of the infield. Parker calls for it. And on the rim of the infield, Dirt makes the catch for out number two. Now batting the pitcher number 41, Aaliyah. Yeah, you know, we talked about Hoot and uh, Hoot and earlier about Lum and losing Lum is such a big loss to this team. But I don't, I don't think you could find anybody any better than Hoot Johnigan to step in here on the staff for Baylor softball. Yeah, I completely agree. He he knows Baylor. He knows Coach Moore, and, and just kind of the hard season it is, regardless of whatever happens, because Coach Lum's not here, and I think he's been a great addition. He was able to step in while Lum was sick, and so the girls know him. Coach Moore knows how to work with him. It's really been a huge blessing to have him. Well pitch to Benford at the plate. She's 0 for 2 hitting today. That's a strike. It's a ball and a strike to Aaliyah Benford. Started at shortstop, came into the circle in the third inning and has been pitcher of record since. It's grounded foul wide of third. Hoot, uh, veteran in the third base coaching box. He doesn't even make a move toward <laughs> fielding those foul balls. Yeah, he's been out there a time or oh, two, yeah? Oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, nobody likes it when it gets uh, warm better than Hoot. Like oh. 80 degrees, 90 degrees, that's, that's in his wheelhouse. That's the sweet spot. <laughs> Grounder into right field by Benford, a base hit. Gilbert will have to hold at second base. The right fielder Ellsworth was in quickly to field that one. There is the fourth hit of the day for the Lady Bears. They've got two aboard for the second consecutive inning. That will give Taylor Ellis an at bat here in the sixth. Pitcher Jacobson still with just uh, 77 pitches on the day. Here's number 78. Ellis grounds it to third. They reached a tag and missed her, but still had time to throw out Ellis at first base. Wow. So that's it. Aaliyah Benford has been in the circle in relief of Sydney Holman Mansell. She's gone three and a third innings. So Baylor has uh, not been able to generate uh, many hits today, only four, not been able to string them together. Except the last two innings, the fifth and the sixth, Baylor had two runners on in the same inning, but nothing uh, coming home to score, so it remains a shutout for Texas. Colleen Sullivan leads off. 
Selman, the shortstop, is back, called off by Lou Gilbert, who makes the catch for out number one here in the top of the seventh inning. Yeah, that triangle right there can be a little tricky. Yeah, you got three people vying for it, screaming for it. Great job by Lou. Just I could hear up here without the headset. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Outfielder coming in usually has a better line on a ball than an infielder going back. Batter, batter is Taylor Ellsworth. Nope, it's M.K. Tedder. Tedder uh, new in right field. Her pinch ran for Ellsworth. Now gets her first at bat of the day. Called strike. It's a ball and a strike to M.K. Tedder. Strike two, one ball, two strikes. Better 462 average on the year. 28th game of the season in which she played. She's grounded to second base. Emily Hot sees it bounce off her glove and into right field. That will be the third error of the day on Baylor. So BMK Tedder is aboard at first base with one out. We got a pinch hitter, another pinch hitter for UT. It's Caitlin Washington will bat. Senior out of Umble. Washington, one of the seniors, recognized prior to the game last night. Note on Washington, she has 47 doubles on the year. The school record for Texas is 48 by Jody Reeves. 1997 to 2000. She was one double away from tying the school record. Washington batting in the uh, spot previously occupied by Mackenzie Parker, the shortstop. Three twelve average on the year for Washington, which is up high. Evens the count at one ball, one strike. Yeah, it looks like Washington has been a starter for most of the games. And Mike White just might be trying to mix up the lineup, see what works best here towards the end of the season, and completely normal for coaches to do. That one glove scooped up by Emily Hott. She'll throw on to McGlon to retire Caitlin Washington for the second out here in the seventh inning as Tedder moves on to second base. So with two down, J.J. Smith to the plate, the designated player for UT. 0 for 2 with a walk today. Reached on an error in the fifth inning. How's this one back? Strike one to J.J. Smith. First name, given name is Jaden. Goes by J.J., freshman out of Rosenberg, George Ranch High School. She's Ball one. A, yeah, she's another one of the players that looks a little new to this starting lineup, her 13th start today. Just chipping away, finding a way in the lineup, and it, yeah, hitting 404, so I would say <laughs> well-deserving of that spot. I'll keep you in the lineup. <laughs> yeah. Tedder, the runner at second base. It's low ball two. There's M.K. Tedder. Two balls and a strike to J.J. Smith. With two down, we're in the top of the seventh inning. It's a grounder. First base side, McGlon can't glove it cleanly. And then turns to toss, and Hot is not there at the bag, so all hands are safe. If they rule that one an infield hit, or could it be the fourth error today by Baylor? Still looking at it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it is error number four today by the Lady Bears. Man, that is tough. That's not something you want your defense to do, especially all 
three of those errors at least have been simple infield ground balls. Now trying to steal second, getting a run down. Baylor plays it well. They will keep Tatter at third base, not let her come home on the throw down to second base. Which was ball one to Camille Corona. End of that, J.J. Smith ends up at second. So Texas with two runners in scoring position. Tatter at third, Smith at second. Two down in the inning. Texas looking to add to their 4 nothing lead over the Lady Bears. There's a bunt out in front of the plate. It's a dandy. Ellis throws. Not in time, and a run scores. Well executed bunt by Camille Corona. Gets a run home, and she is safe at first base. And Texas ups their lead to 5 to nothing over Baylor. Beautiful bunt there. Two outs, you really aren't going to pull your corners in, which she recognized. And that's just a really tough play for Taylor Ellis to make, crashing for two outs. That's great execution by Texas. Ellis did everything she could there. Yeah. Just the bunt was laid down so well. And it's 5-0. Texas on top. Back to the top of the order. And Janae Jefferson, her fifth at bat today. That is a lot of the bats. <laughs> That's moving through the lineup pretty well. Pitch by Benford. That's a called strike. It's ball and a strike now to Jefferson. Jefferson officially one for three this afternoon. Has also reached on a hit by pitch. Runner is going. They bluff the throw to second. Throw to third instead, and Smith is back safely. Corona does move on to second base. Six hits by the Longhorns today. Here's a grounder in the left field. That is number seven. That will get Smith home from third base. An RBI single by Janae Jefferson. Throw back to third. Camille Corona is back standing safely. So an RBI single by Jefferson, and it's 6-0 Texas. They had two runs so far here in the seventh inning. Brings up Shannon Rhodes for UT. Rhodes is one for four on the day. Start to say seven hits by Texas. All singles, no extra base hits for UT on the afternoon. Baylor has, uh, Baylor has four hits on the board, and they're all singles also. So the two teams combined, no extra base hits today. Grounder to Taylor Ellis, throw across in time to retire Rhodes. And that is the inning. But two added to their total for the Longhorn. Like it might be extra bases her last time up. Molly Jacobson, the left-hander, delivers. Here's a fly ball. Shallow centers. Wind catches it. Rhodes puts on the Jets and makes the catch for out number one in the bottom of the seventh. The wind carried that one quite a ways. This wind has its own mind today. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It is gusting. Out of the south, that means it's into the face of the uh, hitters here at Gatterman Stadium. Pitchers are loving it, though. Pitchers love it. Bench hitter for Baylor, Kendall Cross comes to the plate. Third year sophomore from Friendswood, Friendswood High School. Pitch strike one to Cross. This is Kendall's third at bat of the season. Used sparingly. Six games she's played in. Looking for her first hit of the year. And great to give her an at bat. Bottom of the seventh inning. Bears trailing by a 6 nothing count. 
swing and a miss. Didn't get a good cut at that one. And Baylor's down to their final out. Two down here in the bottom of the seventh. Now batting, number 15, Sidney Cayazzo. So Sidney Cayazzo will bat. She uh, came in as a pinch hitter back in the fifth inning. Never had that uh, shot back to the circle. Went down as a single. She owns one of the four hits by Baylor today. Swinging strike rump one. Molly Jacobson, 12 and four on the year, on the verge of her 13th win. Would be complete game number four on the year. Her ERA, 3.71 coming in, but that's going to be uh, lowered if, uh, if this score holds. It's a foul ball off the leg of Cayazos. Yeah, it looks like so far it's fallen to 3-3-8 three, three, uh, up on the scoreboard there. She's been outstanding today, really had control of all of her pitches, and really what I've noticed is she's just letting the defense work. She's not trying to strike everybody out. She's really just getting the ball in play and letting defense do the work. That's just her 86th pitch of the day, so she's been really efficient also. Yeah. Pitch up high, it's a ball and two strikes to Cayazos. Play game three of this series tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central, on senior day for Baylor. Pitch outside, it's two balls, two strikes. Texas fans starting to get a little rowdy over here. <laughs> They've got a good number of fans here. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That is hit down the left field line. That is foul. By about a foot outside the line. Yeah, the ticket office says this was a sold-out game. Oh, really? So okay. We're only allowed to open at 50%, 50 right. but sold out. We'll take it. Interesting. Heard them stay, say in Stillwater they were at 50% uh, yesterday and today, but graduation today at Oklahoma State, and after that they can have full capacity tomorrow. Oh, man. And there is a called third strike, and that is the ball game. Jacobson ends a stellar afternoon, a complete game shutout for Molly Jacobson of Texas. And Texas